Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hello mathematicians, this is Mr. Woods Teaches. And today I'm going to be working on part one of end of year fifth grade for number sense. And this is going to be a multi-part series because it covers different pieces of what you need to know at the end of the fifth year of your mathematics instruction. So let's take a look. Here's the list of things that you need to know at the end of fifth grade. Not only do you need to know them and understand them, but you need to have a deep understanding to be able to be successful in sixth grade. And this first column says number sense. We're looking at rounding, decimals, fractions, percent, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents. The addition and subtraction just be, should just be right off the top of your head. You should be able to do that quickly and accurately. Multiplication. I highly recommend that you do zero through 15, yes, 15, to be able to get that done quickly because you're not going to be able to keep up with the testing requirements as well as the discussions in the classroom. Algebra and functions. You're going to need to have a deep understanding of what the coordinate grid is, what uh, coordinate pairs are or ordered pairs, and be able to graph those functions. You're going to learn new functions such as y is equal to mx plus b. Measurement and geometry. We have angles, obtuse, acute, uh, straight, understand area and the formula behind it for a rectangle length times width for a triangle it's one half the base times the height and then perimeter how do you measure around things understand different types of polygons whether it's a parallelogram a triangle or a square and then volume that can be going into gallons and liters or cubic feet and then statistics now I understand that sometimes fifth grade doesn't get into that go over it or during the summer. Do some work on that so you have some idea of what mean, median, mode, range, and percent are. When they talk about ratios, you know how to apply it there in statistics. By the end of fifth grade, or grade five here, students increase their math fluency with the four basic arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, applied to fractions, decimals, and positive and negative numbers. They know and use common measuring units to determine length and area, and know and use formulas to determine the volume of simple geometric figures. Students also know the concept of angle measurement and how to use a protractor and compass to solve problems. They use grids, tables, graphs, and charts to record and analyze data. And if you notice over here, I show number sense, rounding decimals, fractions, and percent. That's what we're going to be covering in this video for number sense one. Here we have place value. So place value in math describes the position or place of a digit in a number. It says here 5,697.438 thousandths. Well, we plug it into our chart here. So five, six, nine, seven. There's that decimal point there and end here. Four, three, eight. So we have this column compared to this column. Right, this one right here is 10 times larger than this one here. So if I have a 1 here and I put a 1 here, well, that is 10 as opposed to 1. So it's 10 times. Here it goes up another 10 times. Same thing when we're going to the right of the decimal point. But we start with tenths. And then this is 10 times smaller, which is hundreds. So right here, we have ones and tenths are 10 times smaller. Hundreds and thousandths. So we say 5,697, 438 thousandths. Our first thing that we're going to be looking at is rounding. The essential question is how can you round numbers? Well first let's take a look at this chart here. You know it says here rounding numbers, what patterns do you see, round down and round up. Well this is where it's going to be essential. So estimate tells you about how many or how much it is close to an exact amount. You can round a number to find an estimate. If I'm trying to get a round number to feed approximately 4,558 people, then I could just say, well, it's like 4,600. Because there might be more, there could be a little bit less, but I'd rather be a little over than to be under. So we have this number here for number one, a little practice here, round 13.082, or we can say 13 and 82 thousandths to the nearest tenth. So our tenth spot is right here. According to this chart here, okay, I'm sitting there going, well, hold on a second. I'm going to round down, but I have to, I'm looking at the 
to the right, though. It's not that number here. It's not the tenth I'm looking at. I'm looking at the, the hundredth spot right here. And that is 8. So I look over here. It says 8. I round up. So therefore, I would say it's 13.1 because that's what I'm doing. I'm rounding that 0 up to a 1. Let's look at the next number here. Round 6,296,942 to the nearest 100,000. So where's our 100,000? This is our 100,000 right here. So I'm going to mark it. I'm going to look to the right, which is a 9. Again, there's that rounding up. So I can say, okay, well, that's going to be 6,300,000. So 6,300,000, that's rounding up. Let's look at decimals. So a decimal is a number expressed in the scale of tens. When we talk about decimals, where numbers include a decimal point or dot to represent a whole number plus a fraction of a whole number, where tenths, hundreds, and thousandths etc. on out. And then I'm, I'm looking at this, so I have this tenths, remember the place value chart, hundredths, there's my decimal point, ones, tens, and hundreds. So let's go over here, we're going to do some practice. And, and right here it says write each value as a decimal. Well, one of the things I can look at here is that's 18 one thousandths, but I know that a decimal is actually a fraction that's turned into it but let's see what we can do here so I have a thousand all right and now I can reduce it I, there's different things I can do but all I know is that I can start out with zero point now since this is 18 one thousand that eight goes over there one goes here so I need to have a zero here in the ten spot a one in the hundreds and an eight in the thousands see how I just related that there Okay, what's my decimal value here? Well, one of the things I like about this is, I'm gonna write it out as 320 over 20. And I know that if I multiply the top and bottom by five, let's look at this here, five and five, and that's gonna give me this number. So three times five is 15, and 20 times five is equal to 100, so I have 15 hundredths. Does that sound familiar, 15 hundredths? And that is equal to, 0 0.15, which is 15 hundredths. Now here's something else, this is percent. Now a percent, we're gonna get into a little more detail later on, but I wanted to introduce this to you here because a percent here, I could say 7%, well, 100% is equal to one. So I just wanna write that down. So 100%, that is equal to one. So if we look at that, go, well, wait a minute. So what is, if it was 70, then that would be 0.7, right? but it's 7%, so I'm gonna look, I, I just need to do this, and I'm moving this decimal point, if it's right here, for the percent over, so 0 0.07. See how I did that? Because when I convert the other way to go from decimal to percent, I'm gonna move that decimal point one, two spots to make it seven. Easy peasy. Write each value as a fraction. Well. Converting back and forth between decimals and fractions is something that we need to do, as well as between uh, percents and such. I'm going to go a little bit detail, more detail into percents here in a moment. Well, let's take a look at this. This is four one hundredths. Well, I can make it four one hundredths, but wait, I can divide this. I can divide, I know there's four, can go into 125 times. So that is equal to one twenty-fifth as well. And that's just reducing reducing that fraction. So I'm taking that number that I know, you know, 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25, and 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. So now we have, again, to a fraction, so 222 thousandths. So I can write it as a mixed number here, 2, and, and then I have 2, 2, 2 over 1,000. But it says write each value as a fraction. So I, I'm going to say, okay, well, I need to add 2,000 to that. So that is also equal to 2, 2, 2, 2 over 1,000. Because this 2 right here, I can pull that out to make it 2 because 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2. And we come back here. I have 9%. I'm going to look up here and go, oh, wait a minute. I can just write that as a decimal first. So 0. Point zero nine that's is nine percent which is also equal to nine one hundredths 
and I cannot reduce this any further so that's going to be my final answer here so you can see I've made all of these into fractions okay let's work with fractions here a fraction represents an equal part of a whole or a collection we have the different parts here so the top number is 22 and the denominators and I have number on top and then D for down so is 7 and then I have my fraction bar in between or the vaniculum in some places in the world here but we need to understand that we can write fractions as decimals and decimals as fractions we did some before let's take a look at it again so we have this fraction 18 one thousandths so we know that it's going to be 0 0.018 and we did that before and but to explain it if we look at 18 and we're trying to match all the numbers so I put a 0 1 8 which is still true it's just that we don't write 0 in front of there but if we start matching all this stuff up we're like oh 18 one thousandths here we go we're going from 4 25ths to a decimal well I know that 4 times 25 is equal to 100 so I would say 4 25ths so I have 4 at the top 25 at the bottom and I multiply that by 1 essentially which is 4 over 4 and that's equal to so 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 times 25 it's like 4 quarters 25 50 75 100 so now I've written that 4 25ths as 16 one hundredths so now I have 16 one hundredths and I can write that as a decimal so that's going to be 0 point and I have 1 one hundredth and then 16 so there's 16 or 1 tenth and then 16 one hundredths because if that was just a, a 10 there that'd be 1 tenth so six zero point one six. that's my decimal 61 percent I can just look at it as parts but all I need to do is just move that decimal points uh, to the left twice so it's gonna be zero point six one that is because if I multiply this by 100 or I divide that by 100 if I multiply it by 100 it's going to give me 61 and that's where I start out with write each value as a fraction again that's 14 hundredths so that's just easy to write out as 14 over 100 1.32 that's ooh, so you're like whoa wait a minute that's just going to be 132 hundredths because if I just say well it could be 100 over 100 plus 32 over 100 I can write it out that way but here can I reduce this yes I can reduce this because 132 divided by 2 what is that going to be well let's work it out here we go 132 divided by 2 I can't divide 1 by 2 so I'm put a 0 there that's just a placeholder and then let's see here so I have 13 that's gonna be 6 12 now I have 12 here because I 13 minus 12 is 1 and then I bring that 2 down to make it a 12 and 2 times 6 so there we go so now I have 66 fiftieths can I reduce that again yes see I'm doing this I should have started out with 4 because I know that 132 divided by 4 is but I can do it again so that's gonna be 33 25ths 33 plus 33 is equal to 66 and 25 plus 25 is equal to 50 so there we go and then 91 percent into a fraction again it's just bringing that out 91 divided by 100 I can't reduce that any further and that's my answer for this one here percent so a percent is a ratio whose second term is 100 percent means parts per hundred the word comes from the Latin phrase percentum which means per hundred in mathematics we use the symbol percent here it's right here that's my percent symbol for percent now this is something that may not have been covered exactly like this in fifth grade however I want to say for those going from fifth grade into sixth grade I would say study this or try to use this where the part is a portion of the whole amount okay which that's true so here we go here's my pizza and I divide it into four parts and this part right here is one fourth because it's one two three four it is a part of the whole the whole or the entire amount of something so this is the whole which is one or it's four one two three fourths four fourths because one is equal to four over 
4. In essence, we're saying 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. In a percent problem, two of the three amounts will usually be given, but the third amount will be missing. Determine which amount is missing, part, rate, or whole, and then use the correct formula to find the answer. So the rate, that is the percent. And if we look at this here, formulas for finding missing amounts, I have my part. If, I, if I'm looking for the part, it's equal to the rate times the whole. The whole is the rate, of, or, I'm sorry, the part divided by the rate. And the rate is the whole here, or rather the part divided by the whole. And remember to multiply the rate by 100, uh, then add the percent symbol. More on percent. To convert from a decimal to a percentage is done by multiplying the decimal value by 100 and adding the percent symbol. Hmm. Well, here, if I did that, 100 times 0 0.7 is going to give me 70% because it moves at 1, 2, and I'd have a 0 there. To convert from a decimal to percent is to move the decimal point two places to the right. To convert from a fraction to a decimal, if the fraction is a mixed number, change it to an improper fraction. Next, divide the numerator by the denominator, then multiply by 100 and add percent. Write each value as a percent. Well, 0 0.07 times 100. Again, so I go 1, 2, and that is equal to... 7%. 0 0.165 is equal to, what is that as a percent? Again, 1, 2, so I'm going to have 16.5%. 1720 is, you're like going, oh no, how do I do this? Well, again, 17 divided by 20, okay, and I know I'm going to multiply that by, uh, let's see here, 5 over 5, so 5 over 5. 17 times 5 is going to be, that's 50 plus 35, which is going to be 85. Over 100. And I say this as 85 hundredths. And that is equal to 0 0.85. That's well. And I know when I do, I, I create a percent, I'm going to multiply this decimal by 100. So um, that is also equal to 85%. Now, this is a little more difficult because 100 is not divisible by 8. I mean, you can divide it, but it's not divisible evenly. You're like going, whoa, what do I do here? Well, we just go back to, well, long division. So this is 1 divided by 8. So 1 divided by 8. And like 1 cannot be divided by 8. So I have to look at this and I go, okay, well, there's going to be my decimal point. I'm going to add a zero, but 10 can be. It's going to be one. There's eight. I'm going to get two. I'm going to add an, another zero here because I want to, I want to really want to get to the bottom of this. So there's 20. I know that two times eight is 16. Four is there. And I know that I can do this a little bit one more time. So 8 times 5 is equal to 40. So there's, uh, I can just subtract that. And so 40 minus 40 is 0. So 0 0.125, I multiply that by 100, and that's going to give me 12.5%. What is 30% of 20? It's a multiplication problem. So first I'm going to... Say, well, wait, wait, what's 30%? So it's going to be 20 times 0 0.3. So 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 2 is 6. I have a decimal point. I just have 1 there. So it's going to be 6. So my answer is equal to 6. 25 plus four, uh, 48. Think about this logically. What is 1 half of, that's, what is 50%? Which is equal to 5 tenths which is equal to one half of 48, 24. So 24 is one half of 48. And then we have that again. So my answer is going to be equal to 12. See how I did that? So one fourth, uh, one quarter, or this could be written as 48 over one times. So 25%, we know that is one fourth. So one fourth 
when I multiply 1 times 48 is 48, 4 times 1 is 4, so I would have 48 over 4, and then I can simplify, and that's going to give me 12 over 1, which is equal to 12 right here. Now, this is a little bit odd. It's like, well, what's 150% of 30? Well, we go 1, 2, we can write down 1.5, because I'm making it into just a decimal, times 30. And we know that 0 0.5 is equal to one, so one half. So I'm multiplying this, and I can say, well, this is equal to one times 30 is 30, plus one half times 30. So that's again, that's, let's just do this: 130 over one, and one half times 30. I would get uh, that's two times one is one. Yeah, I'm sorry, two times one is two. One times 30 is 30. That is equal to 30 halves. We can reduce that and that is equal to 15 over one, which is equal to 15. So I can go, oh, well, okay, so that's at one, that's at one half times 30 plus 15. And my final answer is equal to 45. I hope you were able to follow along with that. I just wanna say thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and watch for number sense two, which will get us out of number sense and onto the other subjects here. Thank you.